Welcome to Under the Influence, the show dedicated to drinking and thinking, musing and boozing. I'm Guy Shepard, your host of this blood alcohol content thought experiment, which is brought to you by Plan Man, a destination for men and women who like men. Check us out. I'm excited to have Greg Ellis, author of The Respondent, Exposing the Cartel of Family Law, a book that has the distinct honor of being number one on two Amazon categories, divorce and suicide. Welcome, Greg. Cheers. Cheers, Guy. Thank you for having me. And uh, cheers, the lovely Barolo. Um, very pleasant. I think we live in a culture where everybody thinks that they ought to be happy, that they have a right to happiness. And they wanted to kind of like kind of put it into our, you know, their minds. It's like, no, nah, you better off see yourselves as cellmates than soulmates, because the only way you can do time together is if you recognize that this isn't easy. And then I kind of like listen to your story and I'm like, shit. It's like, this should be like a coupling with pre cana If you give the respondent to anybody who's thinking about marriage, at least they go in it with their eyes wide open. And, you know, what I'd like to do, you know, and ask you to do is just kind of tell your story, but also with this idea that I think that, you know, it's almost irresponsible not to know pretty much what happens when a marriage fails or what could happen, right? And it's like, I mean, you have just gone through the Cuisinart of the, you know, family law, divorce court, and 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 maybe you might even take give some attention to what is it like doing that in California? Yeah. March fifth, two thousand fifteen. Happy home life, earned uh, privilege and success. Member of the country club. Um, two beautiful sons, ten and eight, and um, twenty years married. And uh, like many uh, men and fathers and mothers and uh, women, I had no idea of the two words family law. And in the span of eight hours, literally at around 4.15 in the afternoon on March 5th, 2015, it was a Thursday, uh, two police officers, the doorbell rang, two police officers arrived and then there were three and then there was a sergeant and then there were five. And I was um, ushered from my home in handcuffs. Uh, I was incarcerated, the first in, of five incarcerations, based on a false hearsay allegation made um, in divorce court. Uh, I became homeless overnight, almost destitute overnight, and watched helplessly as I lost every material possession that I had ever earned throughout my life. And um, my sons lost their father for half their childhoods. And in crossing that legal Rubicon from citizen to respondent, I migrated from a world of presumed innocence and respected privacy to one of assumed guilt and immediate and ruthless judgment. And then I discovered as I entered the court system um, that it, while I was incoherent trying to struggle through this devastation uh, that I'd found myself in, that I thought I was going to get justice and the American legal system and I would have a judge and uh, there'd be fairness and and I entered the star chamber. And then in, in a paradoxical kind of catharsis, I got some relief finding out that I wasn't alone and there were tens of thousands of parents um, that had been through this and were going through this situation. Almost like souls and eats in the gulag, he wasn't alone. Right, yeah. <laughs> we find solace through communion. Um, and, and, and finding that out, it was, it was a little cathartic, but it, was, it, was a, it, it made me angry um, that we have a system, the one branch of our legal system, uh, family law, which doesn't offer a presumption of innocence. There is no jurisprudence. One of the things I really liked that I thought captured, you know, the inequity, you know, we all believe that we're innocent until proven guilty, but you capture the soul of what it is to find ones in the itself in the respondent's chair. I thought that was nice. Yeah. So, well, originally the first title for the book that I wrote, a working title was how to survive when your wife wants you, when your spouse wants you dead and has the legal ways and means to kill you. It was going to be a survival book, a strategy book of like how to actually dodge the silver bullets and, and all of that. But I arrived at the respondent because it has a, not only does it have a kind of John Grisham ring to it, but it also uh, is the name given to that uh, part person who responds. So in legal parlance, you have a petitioner and a respondent in um, in a court of law, you would have, you know, the plaintiff and the defendant. So in essence, the respondent is the defendant on the back foot from the word go. 
Um, so that's why I called I called the book The Respondent, Exposing the Cartel of Family Law. It is a legalized cartel. I mean, when I got deeper into the into the research and found out that states are reimbursed six thousand dollars for every child that's placed into foster care mm. i started thinking hang on is this child protection services or child profiteering services uh what are we doing with our families what, what how how did we get here where we have a legal system that doesn't provide a presumption of innocence guilty till proven more guilty and you then you put on top of that the icing of smash the patriarchy, all men bad, believe all women, all of this radical neo-feminist um, messaging in the media about how, you know, the entirety of womanhood is, is victimized and victimhood has become the new social currency and its economy is booming. You've got, you've got younger generations of men hearing this signaling that you are bad, you are not worthy, you're not good, merely by the fact that you were born with the wrong chromosome. So I thought, you know what, I have to share my story. So I share my story. Um, and that really is a vessel for the other stories that are out there, all the same, different details, with a view to hopefully changing, having some impact on changing the system, on uh, affecting public policy. Um, Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. Take a sip of that Barolo. <laughs>